Welcome back to Falcon Physician Review's online review for USMLE Step 1. This is Microbiology Module 29, talking about viral genetics. In this module, we're going to talk about the different ways in which variation is introduced into the viral genome. Welcome back to Falcon Physician Review's online review for USMLE Step 1. This is Microbiology Module 29, Viral Genetics. Viruses grow rapidly. A single particle can produce tons, thousands of progeny. Viral polymerases are not very good at proofreading and they make lots of errors. Adeno, herpes, and pox viruses code for their own polymerases which don't have proofreading. RNA viral polymerases also don't have proofreading. The result of this is that we get huge error rates. You can get mutations all over the place, but viruses don't really care they're able to produce thousands of progeny, and if some of them are defective, it doesn't matter. This is the mindset you have to have when you study viral genetics. Genetic change comes in the form of mutation, recombination, reassortment. You can also have point mutations, insertion, and deletion mutations. High mutation rates permit adaptation to changed conditions. So if you get a different antigen, or you, have, you want to get antiviral drug resistance, or if you want to change your receptor preference, mutation is a good way to do that from a virus standpoint. Recombination is the exchange of information between two genomes. It's very common in DNA viruses. Classic recombination is shown in this figure. You have a blue and a pink strand of DNA. They recombine so that some of the pink genes are transferred to the blue DNA. The blue vice versa goes over to the pink. Therefore, we have the opportunity for new mutations, new rearrangement of genes, new antigens. Reassortment is a form of recombination which is non-classical. It's very efficient, but only happens in segmented viruses. Segmented viruses have their, their genome in different segments, and so they can mix and match with much more rapidity than through normal recombination. Reassortment results in antigenic shifts leading to pandemics, such as in rotavirus, HIV, and influenza. This figure shows reassortment. This big blue bulky cell is infected by a pink and a green virus, both of them which have segmented genomes. And as you see, you can get a different combination of different genes, and so you can have a huge antigenic shift and antigenic drift. With reassortment, you can also get genetic shift, so, and that's commonly the way the influenza works. Influenza A, H1N1, was what caused the Spanish flu in 1819, 1918. And then what you do is you get recombination through the avian flu, which is H5N1. So all of a sudden you have H5 from the avian species and the rest of the human genes from that strain. And so the humans are not able to anticipate this and we get sick. Wrapping up Module 29, we talked about a lot of different ways in which viruses can introduce variety into their genome. You should remember that any viral polymerase is going to have no proofreading capability and will introduce a lot of errors and therefore a lot of variety. Also, we talked about reassortment and rearrangement. If you have a segmented genome, you can reassort, and that's what we'll talk about with influenza viruses and how they get rapid changes in their antigens. The, the, the bottom line is viruses can be expendable. They can afford to make a lot of variety because they'll find millions of progeny. And if only a few of them are infectious, then it's okay. It doesn't matter. That's a different prospect than we have here as humans, but it's what the viruses use to cause disease. Next, we're going to talk about Module 30, how we diagnose viral infections.